Okay, welcome back, uh, everyone. On the chat, we had some questions for the online students, so I've answered it. Please let me know if um, uh, you know you are satisfied with the answers. Okay, and uh, we have more questions here, so go ahead, Sean. Sorry, I forgot my question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's that's fine. So, if no more questions, then I'll just proceed. We were talking about delays in hearing from God, and we said that one is timing. So God's timing uh, is something that we have to wait upon. Secondly, we said there can be demonic interference. Third one is completing all obedience. So what does it mean? There is an example uh, in our uh, notes here where um, uh, a pastor by the name of Dutch Sheets, he shares an experience where a lady was praying for her unsaved family members. So she was praying for them for many years, but they never really accepted Christ. But at some point, you know, she, she understood that in her heart she had a lot of unforgiveness for these people. She did not regard them because they were living worldly lives and, you know, so many other um, ungodly practices, lifestyle that, that she noticed in them. So that made her dislike and hold a grudge against these people whom she's praying for. So you have to understand, she's praying for a set of people, but she's also angry with them. But at in uh, one particular season of her life, she realizes that she has to forgive them. So it's when she forgives them that she sees almost immediately they get saved. Okay, so what that pastor is saying is he's saying that sometimes we carry ungodly attitudes in our hearts. So it's not that, you know, God is not hearing our prayers or the word of God is untrue. It's none of that. But we may have a very self-righteous attitude or some kind of a sin in our own selves. We are unforgiving. We are bitter. These things form a barrier in receiving answers from God. So it's when our obedience is fulfilled or we overcome you know, these attitudes and sins that God is actually able to release the answers to that prayer. So this also can be another reason why there are delays because we are taking time to change ourselves. Okay? Uh, so these are the main reasons why we see delays in prayer. But as we've said earlier, in fact, Luke 18 verse 1, Jesus said, men, or, men should not lose heart, but they must always pray. Isn't it? Can somebody read it? Luke 18 verse 1, begin there. Um, Rin, could you please use the mic? Yeah. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Okay, so what is Jesus saying? You should always pray, don't lose heart. In other words, don't give up. If it is in God's will, it will happen. Don't give up. Jesus is saying, don't give up. So persistence in prayer. Perseverance, you know, that's another word which we use. So if you look at the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 6 verse 12, it says that the people who inherited the promises of God, how did they inherit when you look at people in the Bible, people like Abraham, people like Jacob, people like David, two characteristics are mentioned in Hebrews 6 12 and that is faith, patience. Faith, patience. So we need the capacity to persist, persevere. Don't give up. There will be some answers which we get like that. We prayed, oh wow. And you know what happened? This happened. God answered like this. This miracle took place. Wonderful. But sometimes you need to exercise patience 
along with faith because there can be a waiting period for whatever reason it could be it may not be god's timing or uh, there could be a demonic interference or you know we said uh, obedience must be fulfilled maybe god is looking at us and our character to come to a certain place okay so faith and patience faith and patience we don't give up we don't give up there's another verse in hebrews 10 verse 35 can somebody read that please hebrews 10 and verse 35 and use the mic it's it's for the benefit of all yeah. therefore do not cast away your confidence which has great reward yeah that's it yeah that's okay. 35 35 yeah 35 okay so therefore do not cast away your confidence so what is the word of god tell us it says waiting can cause us to become very frustrated it's not a it's not an easy place at all when you're waiting on god god you said think about abraham you know he would have he would have thought everyone else has a son you know people i know my friends my relatives they all have a son i don't have a son so it can get so frustrating 25 years again is a long time to wait for god so the god is faithful enough to give us words there to encourage us and say don't throw away your confidence just because it's taking time don't say oh god has changed his plan don't do that be persistent men should always pray and not lose heart jesus said so don't give up okay so we need that attitude in prayer now let's also look at another dimension when we pray right when we pray the fulfillment of that promise takes place now what can be the spiritual dynamics you know there can be so many things that are happening in the spiritual realm one is if there is a demonic interference that is being broken for sure you know we know that but in the case of elijah it's interesting to note that in first kings chapter 17 verses 1 and 2 god speaks to him and gives him a word and says it is going to rain okay so imagine with me he is a prophet of god he has heard a word from god so what do you expect if god gave a word will it take place or not it will okay and elijah is one of those mighty prophets in scripture and god told him it is going to rain so what happens elijah he goes up to the king he reveals it to him and tells him it is going to rain okay um i think in 17 it's more like a general thing that god says and in the initial verses of chapter 18 is when more specifically god says it's going to rain so he tells the king and there is something very important that he does from verse 39 to verse 46 so can someone please read it first kings 18 verses 39 to 46 when the people saw this they threw themselves on the ground and exclaimed the lord is god the lord alone is god elijah ordered cease the prophets of baal don't let any of them get away the people seized them all and elijah led them down to the river kishon and killed them ah uh, from 39 to 40 ma'am 36 sorry uh, at the hour of the, at the hour of the afternoon sacrifice the prophet elijah approached the altar and prayed O Lord God, O Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, prove now that you are God of Israel, that I am your servant, and I have done all this at your command. Answer me, Lord, answer me, so that this people will know that you, the Lord, are God, that you are bringing them back to yourself. 
Okay, so First Kings chapter eighteen. Okay, so um, yeah, you read till verse. A uh, verse thirty-seven and thirty-seven six thirty-seven. 37 till 37 i read from 36 i read till 37 can I read more till 46 yeah you have to read okay. all the way till 46 uh the lord sent fire down and it burnt up the sacrifice the wood and the stones scorched the earth and dried up the water in the trench when the people saw this they threw themselves on the ground and exclaimed the lord is god the lord alone is god elijah ordered seize the prophets of baal don't let any of them get away the people seized them all uh, Elijah led them down to the river Kishon and killed them. The end of the drought. Then Elijah said to King Ahab, Now go and eat. I hear the roar of rain approaching. While Ahab went to eat, Elijah climbed to the top of Mount Carmel, where he bowed down to the ground with his head between his knees. He said to his servant, Go and look towards the sea. The servant went and, retur uh, and returned, saying, I didn't see anything. Seven times in all, Elijah told him to go and look. The seventh time he returned and said, I saw a little cloud no bigger than a man's hand coming up from the sea. Elijah ordered his servant, go to the king Ahab and tell him to get into his chariot and go back home before the rain stops him. Okay, great. So thank you. Thank you, Sean. Um, I know you read quite a few verses quite long there. Uh, so what we saw just now is, that Elijah acts in line with the word that he received. So, First Kings chapter 18, verse 1, uh, it says, The word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go present yourself to Ahab, and I will send rain on the earth. So, God already gave him the word. And what do you see just before? You know, uh, he goes and tells Ahab about the rain. He has a mountaintop experience. You know, on Mount Carmel, where, where the fire comes down and a great miracle takes place. So, a prophet like Elijah, who has seen these mighty miracles of God, the last thing you will expect from him is waiting. So, he tells Ahab, uh, you go eat, drink. I can hear the sound of abundance of rain. So, what is he saying? He is confirming the promise of God. In verse 1, the word of the Lord came to him and said that, it is going to rain. So he confirms and that shows us he's very confident that it is going to rain. But here's the funny part. There's no cloud in the sky. What to do? Isn't it embarrassing? Like a prophet like Elijah, just now he's called down fire and he's told the king, I can hear the sound of abundance of rain, but there's no cloud in the sky. If it doesn't rain, you know, embarrassment, worse, you know, maybe some punishment, threat to his life. But what does Elijah do? He goes up to the mountain, puts his head between his feet. That was their position of prayer. And he starts praying. So it shows us that Elijah knew a spiritual truth. What is that truth? Even if God spoke to the prophet. Okay? The prophet knew that he had to pray for that word to come to pass. You understand? And how much did he pray? Seven times. Seven times he prayed for the word which was already spoken out of the mouth of God. Meaning, it's sure, it is going to rain, but... God required for man to pray. And Elijah knew about that. He knew that as a man, he has to co-labor with God. You know, release the authority of God through prayer. So he prayed, I would say, persistently, earnestly, repeatedly. He, he told his servant, go see, go see, go see. Because he knew that his prayer was doing something in the spiritual realm. So the point I want to make for all of us is 
when we pray we don't know how but something is taking place you know in the spiritual realm for that manifestation to come even if it is the word of god even if it is a prophecy oh i have a prophecy over my life that i am going to be like this like that it, paul tells timothy you know you need to pray you need to pray what has been prophesied over you you need to pray those things through okay so persistent prayer is necessary for us to see the manifestation of god's promises in our lives now james james takes the example of elijah when he talks about prayer and in james chapter 5 um you know he goes on to say verse 17 he says elijah was a man with a nature like ours and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain and it did not and he prayed again and the heaven gave rain and the earth produced its fruit so james is reminding us if a human being when he says elijah a man like us he's just saying that elijah was a human being so if a human being could pray and god could bring rain or god could you know stop the rain if you and i pray honestly later on you know uh, uh, he goes on to say uh, that wait earlier in verse 16 you know he already makes that statement the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much so the way elijah prayed earnestly that kind of prayer is very effective is what james is saying and he you know quote certain examples in this passage itself so in verse 19 and 20 james says brethren if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone turns him back let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins and you know in this passage james also talks about the prayer of faith which will save the sick so there are two kinds of prayers that james has included here which seem like prayers which may need persistence what are these prayers sometimes when we pray for healing okay <coughs> we might need to persist and pray again and again and again okay so there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with that sometimes when we pray for people who have gone away from god we may think oh i've prayed what is this they are not getting saved at all but what does james do he includes these two categories of healing and praying for the lost in persistent prayer which means that there can be a requirement to pray again and again and again to see the manifestation of either healing or salvation of somebody who is not in christ okay so uh, persistent prayer you know um is required in these instances so that's a little bit about persistent prayer um yes any any other thoughts and questions before we move on to the next subject here uh ma'am when uh, you said daniel did the persistent uh, prayer right is that persistent prayer a persistent prayer like uh, based based on faith or just like a regular persistent prayer like keep on praying over and over again yeah so you see uh, so faith is very important in prayer uh, shon so every prayer we pray must have faith in it so yeah persistent oh, prayer also includes faith Now the thing is that um, I think, by for my understanding, that faith, belief, like was properly like introduced or taught to people during uh, in the New Testament. Whereas in the Old Testament, there are only like a select few people who God chose and through whom a uh, God made whatever things He wanted to make possible. Like He chose Samuel in order to tell prophecies. 
or he chose uh, da uh, David to be king and lead his uh, lead Israel. You know, only uh, and he to write um, uh, certain psalms. So I thought, I mean, so I believe that um, is a certain pe you know, certain people whom God chose, like only those people would have faith and not many others. Okay, no, I I see where you're coming from, uh, but you see in the old uh, testament, you're saying only some people who were anointed had faith. Yes, that's yeah. what I believe. I don't think that is the case because okay. if you see, there were when you talk about the anointing, right? Mm -hmm. There were at least three categories of people who were anointed. So you had kings, you had prophets, you had priests. But over and above, like if you look at normal people, so you do have godly people. Like I mentioned Hannah to you, right? So uh, they may not be in one of these roles, but they have a life of faith, Ruth. She's not in any of these categories, but it's a life of faith. So faith is essential for you know a walk with god whether you are so called anointed in the under the old covenant or you're not anointed and we know for a fact that under the new covenant for everybody hebrews 11:6 faith pleases god he who comes to god must you know believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him so without faith nobody can approach god and see you know answers to prayer or these um, spiritual laws work it will not work if you don't have faith these things will not work another reason why i ask is because in those days you had like scriptures read it read out in uh, synagogue read out in temples and you, you didn't have much access for them to like take it back home and study, uh, no, the, study the scriptures, uh, no, for uh, common folk. So if you want, if if you wanted to hear the, if you want to hear God's word or the scripture, you have to go there to that temple and then hear it. So, I mean, that give that like doesn't give much of a chance for them to you know build on your faith. Only if they go there, like they can like build build on your faith. So I thought then yeah. their only option would be is for prayer so that's why i asked whether yes so uh, your point is that since they were not exposed to the scriptures yeah. how did faith come to them uh, what i would say is the scriptures were read out to them you know in their gatherings um, sometimes like in the book of ezra he reads to the people he reads the scripture he gathers everyone even the animals and they read the scriptures so faith comes from there but you see even um, like verbally like stories like abraham and his journey of, of faith with god these things were passed on from generation to generation so there was faith in the people and they would have heard about the acts that god did during moses times i'm just giving you a few examples just to let you know that people were exposed to the scriptures yeah so they had faith yes anand i'm praying persistently for one thing and it is not happening mm -hmm. i have faith uh, in god but how can i know is it a god will or not okay, okay. so uh, anand your question is you have faith but you don't know if it is god's will or not god's will okay that's the question okay so i would say that it must be the other way around first you need to know whether it's god's will or not god's will then you need to have faith okay because i have faith ma'am i have faith you have faith yeah okay you just don't know okay uh, i would put it like this see you know broadly something like okay god will do something good in my life so you have faith for that but you don't know specific what exactly he's going to do like that is it oh you can't uh, share the example okay fine i i will see how to answer so what i'm saying is first i need to know whether it's god's will or not okay what is god's will what is revealed in his word is his will. God's word is his will. Okay. So, if I know that it is God's word, 
then i have confidence that is faith that yes god will do it or um you know god is pleased with it so that is why i'm saying first i need to know what is god's will then only i can have faith for it if i don't know what is god's will how can i be confident i'm praying since so many days persistently i have faith on it uh, it is not happening actually so can i consider it uh, it's not a god's will okay so i would take this under the category of okay i'm finding it difficult to answer you because the the steps are reversed okay so what happens is if you you are saying you have faith that means you believe it will happen right it will happen so then you know that it's god's will no i'm just asking that does it make sense what i'm saying uh and uh, i think the only way we can help you up now is you tell exactly what it is because only then we can help you because if it's like something you're asking for a car or something like then we can like uh, they need to know what it is then there's no other way to help you just tell us okay he doesn't want to share yeah. so we we don't want to push it i can just tell ma'am like in private or something okay so what i would say anand is you are saying i have faith that it will happen so i am assuming that it is god's will okay with that assumption okay i am i'm saying but it is not happening right now so should i give up that's your question right so if you know that it's god's will okay and you have faith for it then don't give up i didn't say only don't give up i said if it is god's will and you have faith for it then don't give up i think i i gave him another question for his question that's okay let it be like that so we'll move forward yeah anything else about waiting persistence uh ma'am when you talk about uh, you know how demons like uh, interfere between your uh, your conversation with god your like response from god i think nowadays like when you talk about uh, interference i think it's basically with our minds rather than just like the actual like uh, interference from uh, like god's message coming down like how it was with daniel so right now it's more within uh, more in our minds like with doubts and fears I think that's the main like um, reason or the uh, reason why we won't ta- aren't able to get the answers to what we ask for, or are aren't able to get what we want. Mm. So uh, you're saying the delays are because of our mind. Yeah, our mind, and uh, you know the um, Satan takes advantage of the of those disadvantages that we have. You know our doubts, our fears, and we even have like even a hint of doubt or fear. then certain can emit like multiply that like a, a wildfire like, uh, like a wildfire in a forest sure so uh, that's true most of the ways in which satan tries to um, interfere in the life of a be- believer is through the mind so you would see you know we we'll study this later when we do believers authority uh, accusation condemnation confusion you know these are the things so he plays games in our minds uh, to get us to not believe god okay doubts all that he puts in our in our minds so that is true uh, but in the case of daniel we are looking at a demonic interference isn't it so what i want to tell also shawn is while satan interferes with our minds he can also interfere with the circumstances even paul writes about it in uh, thessalonians he says that satan hindered me i wanted to do more ministry in this region but satan hindered me so through circumstances in different ways satan and his demons can uh become a hindrance for us so it's not just my mind i can have complete faith but my circumstance can be interrupted by demons 
it's possible okay sure so any other questions or okay sure sure it's good it's good to learn we'll just after me okay hmm so if prayer is communication with the lord how can demons interfere so you see demons um so whatever is revealed to them whatever they they know of they can interfere in that okay so if they are aware see demons only pick up on we we should understand that they are finite they are not god only god knows everything god knows the future god knows the past he knows everything so when it comes to demons they only know what is revealed to them so if let's say they catch some information they can work with that information so if they come to know that you know you are planning to go and pray for somebody they can create some you know uh, in, uh, they can hinder you in your travel or hinder you in your program arrangements and things like that so whatever they are aware of they can interfere so when we pray um not so much i mean of course we generally pray in our natural languages right so demons can pick it up if they can hear natural languages like normal human languages they they can know what your plans are yeah no so that's the only thing which they can't understand tongues they cannot understand you got it so that is kind of insulated so when you pray in tongues as we've been saying you speak mysteries unto god no demon can find out what mysteries you're talking to god but human languages they can pick it up or maybe you're just talking to somebody you know if i'm just telling vimal hey vimal i'm going here for ministry next week demons will know we live in a finite world they can pick up on the information that we share and uh, maybe you know when i'm going there uh, and somebody sometimes you have all these people you no know, they see your hands they read the palms and they say something about you and they say oh i know you have come for ministry nothing great about it because demons can pick up existing information and pass it around you understood they cannot tell you anything new yes so human language can understand no demon can human language understand demons yeah we are you are using tongues we are using other human language so human language demon can understand yes so human languages demons can understand no uh, francis so you see tongues that's why it needs interpretation and that interpretation can only come from god's spirit because that's a language which only god knows only god knows okay but as i have been telling all of us there is something known as tongues as a sign which you see in acts chapter 2 so when i am praying in tongues for me it's an unknown language i don't know what i'm saying but maybe francis is hearing me in malayalam okay you are hearing a human language but i am praying an unknown language so it's very mysterious this kind of tongues is known as tongues as a sign it doesn't happen all the time yeah okay yes i think prince had a question okay sure uh, we will you finish you finish no problem you you are speaking from Ma'am, uh, uh, sometimes prayer is uh, comes from we are praying in every situation, na. So in some situation, prayer comes from pray, we are praying, but it shows we are we have no faith. Like uh, if we read the uh, if we read about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and he is front of the king, and 
uh, in that time we can't see in bible they prayed for lord help us to uh, help us to deal with this situation they didn't pray like that and they told they didn't pray even they didn't uh, told to god help us they tell if god help us it's okay it's if it, it god will not help it's not okay so my question is this sometimes we can uh, pray praise like when some situations praise like uh, showing the unfaith yeah it it is possible vimal so we can we can do that and that's why we we say see god is very gracious he will uh, you know awaken us to what his will is but at the end of the day i have to ask for it so if i'm going on confessing something that is not correct uh, that will manifest in my life you got it so that's why i'm saying like even for anand's uh, point that's the reason i'm saying faith always is a by product of knowing the will of god so i need to take time in the word or uh, if i am not clear i need to ask god god is this your will reveal your will reveal your will once i am confident that it is his will then faith comes then i don't give up i can persist i can do whatever okay uh, but i don't pray my own prayer the way vimal said i just say okay god if you help it's fine if you don't help it's fine there's no faith in that yeah there's no faith you're right okay yes prince sometimes uh, the delay of our prayers uh, we, can it be also for to change uh, our intentions or uh, to test are we really serious about our prayers or not yeah sure so sometimes um, the delay it helps us rearrange things within our heart right yeah our motives of why we are praying sometimes we can pray for some things with wrong motives also right yeah so right. god uh, delays uh, to change our motives and to correct them in a right way sure yes so there are delays because of that more questions okay nice so it's only in your class that i'm taking so long to complete my i have a time table but we are way behind the time table but that's okay as long as you're learning i think i'm happy about that yes mm. so there is this demonic forces that's happening so uh, how do we know if it or how can we perceive it's the demonic force or not okay uh, so you're saying how to perceive the demonic force See if something happens like not the way it's supposed to go, and uh, sometimes people blame it's a devil's thing that's happening, or it might be something else. So how do we know if it's the devil's work? Or... Mm. So if uh, there is an interference, how do we say that something was demonic in it, right? So this is what I follow. I generally go by. you know like a practical analysis of of things for example you know if i came here and i had only 5 minutes to set up and this and that i wouldn't take it as oh demons are trying to attack me because i'm you know teaching on prayer and intercession no i came late it's as simple as that so i need to correct that and try to come in little earlier it's a very practical reason so best to go with the practical evaluation of things like 90% 95% of the time and as i've been saying romans 8:16 the spirit bears witness with our spirits so maybe not even 95% i would say uh 98% generally it's some of the things that we need to do you know that will resolve the matter but maybe those 2% of the times there is an interference and in my spirit i'm able to pick it up sometimes we can tell that hey this is not normal something else is going on here you see so you really need the holy spirit to give you that inner knowing otherwise you will never know that something is demonic see when we pray for people we would pray you know uh, let's say somebody who's sick we would pray and say um, you know 
I speak healing in Jesus' name. I, I command healing in Jesus' name. But sometimes you look at a sick person and we see this in scripture, right? That there is a mute spirit. There's a deaf spirit. Jesus cast out these spirits and those people were healed. Right? So healing came when? When they dealt with the demons. So when you're praying for somebody, you might sense, hey, I should not command healing. I have to take authority. I have to take authority. I have to command this demon to come out. Be set free in Jesus' name. You're praying something completely different for healing. You understood. But how, how did I know what to pray? The spirit bears witness with our spirit. So you have to pick it up from the Holy Spirit. That's the only way. Okay, that's when you'll know whether there is a demonic interference or not. But as default, just go by you know, normal, practical way of evaluating things. Yeah, sure, Sean. Please use the mic. Uh, Ma'am, are tongues really all that important? Sorry? Are tongues really all that important? Our tongues Our all tongues. that important. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Good. I mean, genuine question you're asking. So I would say very, very, very important. Okay. Okay. The reason being, the reason being, see, if it were not important, then God would not give us that, that gift, uh, Sean. And you know, you see that Jesus asked his disciples to wait for the baptism in the Holy Spirit before they went and did any ministry. He said, you wait, you wait, you wait. So they waited in the upper room. If it was not important, you know, the baptism in the Spirit, which in turn activates all the gifts of the Spirit in the believer, Jesus would have told them, you go and do ministry, no problem. Because you're born again. Because when we are born again, what do we say? Holy Spirit lives inside us, right? So that should be sufficient. For whatever reason, Jesus said, wait till you are endowed with power from on high. Then you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And from there, Acts 2.17, <coughs> we begin to see the manifestation of, you know, the uh, outpouring of the Holy Spirit and the tongues in, in that passage. Now, even though the prophecy which is quoted there by Joel, it talks about, you know, my, they, will, they will prophesy, they will dream dreams, they will see visions. There was something completely different which was taking place, which was speaking in tongues. But you know what Peter said? When he saw people speaking in tongues, Peter in the sermon, he says, this is that, what Joel said. And he, and he quotes Joel. So... This is the promise that the father made. And this is the promise that Jesus made to the disciples and said, you have to receive this if you are going to minister in my name. So you see the importance there because without it, he didn't send the disciples out. Okay, And we see that, you know, um, tongues began to um, be released out of the believers. And later on, for greater understanding, Paul writes more elaborately about the gifts of the Spirit and the value of tongues and all that. But here's my point. The Father wanted to bless the people with the baptism, okay, leading to uh, gifts of the Spirit. Jesus told the believer to wait till they received it. Paul, when he more specifically talks about tongues, he says, I am using it already much more than all of you. So, all of this points to a level of importance, okay, uh, that this practice has and the spiritual dynamics. So, I would suggest, uh, I mean, I, I understand your quest and where your question is coming from. So, you can research it more. There is a publication known as uh, The Wonderful Benefits of Praying in Tongues. I would suggest you go through that Plus, uh, we've had two sessions here in class regarding it. So just listen to all of that. And then maybe you can uh, let me know what you feel. Uh, the reason why I asked is because, like, as you said, 
when uh, Jesus sent them out as witnesses, you know, of uh, of Christ, you know, about to spread his messages. So when he sent them out as witnesses and he did all these things, because tongues were the only thing, you know, they were able to heal. They were able yeah, sure. to, uh, to bring the dead back to life. So sure, sure. when you uh, talk about tongues, then uh, there, isn't that just like to show them that they are God's, God's witnesses or they are God's people? And that rather than like tongues being um, uh, just a way, like a special way of communicating to God? So you see, tongues is not the only gift, no? Yeah. What we're saying is, we're saying tongues is important. We're not saying it's the only gift that God gave and there was nothing else happening apart from tongues. That's not what we're saying. Okay. okay? So uh, that's what I, I, I would suggest. You can go through the benefits of praying in tongues and see you know, how that would be different from praying in the human language. Okay? And uh, yeah, then we can talk. I think okay. that would be better. Uh, just on last point. Now, um, I mean, uh, what I want to say in the end is that isn't our, um, you know, isn't our prayer in our own language with our combined faith more than enough than uh, praying in tongues? You know, if we if we have if we pray in our own language with our combined faith, I think that would be more than enough to reach uh, to for God to hear what we want to say and for us to get a response back from God. Is what mm. I'm trying to say in the end. Okay, so uh, I mean, if that is your opinion, then you know uh, I respect it. I have nothing to say about it. But what I feel I have learned from the Word of God is that somewhere human languages are not sufficient to communicate with God, which is why God has given us something like tongues. Okay, so I would take the opposite stand. You're saying it's enough. I'm saying it's not enough from what I've learned. Uh, so I think it's best we leave it here okay. and we discuss uh, sometime later. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Okay. Only one more minute to go. Okay. Your class is a very persistent class. That much I understood today. Make sure you get everything from that subject before you let the teacher move on to the next subject. But uh, it's a good thing. You know, I really appreciate it. How about we pray and we close? Um, yeah, so somebody can lead in prayer. Anyone? Anand, please, you lead us. Thank you, God. Thank you. Amen. And thank you. Thank you, everyone. So uh, thank you to the online students as well. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for your patience as you're listening. If you have any questions, please do post it on the stream page and uh, I'll make sure I answer those questions for us. So uh, yeah, we close off for now and we'll connect next week. Thank you and bye, everybody.